Hi there, welcome to this course on data visualization with Python, Plotly and Power BI. My name is Harshit and I'm instructor for this class. I'll be teaching you how to use Python to create amazing data visualization charts using Microsoft Power BI and we will also cover various kinds of Power BI tools and techniques. After that, my co-instructor Pranjal will teach you about using Plotly to create interactive charts. In this course, you will be learning to create various kinds of visualization charts such as line chart, dashed line charts, scatter plot, whirling chart with Seaborn and Matplotlib Python frameworks. You will also learn to create a strip plot and box plot, uh, a line plot, and much more. Moreover, you would also learn to build interactive charts using Python Plotly, such as creating time series chart. Uh, bubble chart, pie, donut, and sunburst chart that are very interactive uh, and easy to represent various kinds of complex data. You will also learn to create group and stacked bar charts and much more. So if you are curious to learn these data visualization skills uh, using Python, Plotly, and Power BI, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about installing Python packages for data science in Power BI. So let's start with this. So once you have a uh, Power BI downloaded on your computer or you can use an online installer, uh, the next step is to ensure that you have all the Python packages required for data science pre-installed. So just go to file options and settings and options. Here you just move to Python scripting tab and just select these two options. You have to detect the Python home directory. If Python is already installed on your computer, you can find it into uh, this PC, C, System32 for Windows and for Mac and Linux uh, with its respective directories. And also you have to uh, select the Python IDE uh, to detect, but uh, it is set to default OS program. In my settings, uh, you can define a different ID. Uh, so, if you don't have a Python installed, you should uh, go to the python.org website and you can simply download the Python package, the latest one, and just provide its path in the uh, home directory settings in Power BI. Next step is to uh, open the command line interface and just execute three different commands. First for installing pandas, then for matplotlib, and then for seaborn. So just type pi py minus m pip install pandas. So this will install the pandas file. And before that, you can make sure that the Python is already installed on your system or not. You can run the Python command in the directory where it is. So for uh, us, uh, the directory is C users and any username. So currently um, in the directory within the Python folder, uh, you can run it uh, in the user directory as well. So I already have the pandas library installed, but if you don't have, this is the way you can install it. For those who don't know how to install, so just run these three commands. The first syntax is similar: pi minus m pip install. And then you have to just provide pandas, matplotlib, and seaborn. In the same way, you can also download other file libraries uh, required in the Python. And even if you have uh, already installed matplotlib or seaborn, you can update it. Okay. It will tell you uh, whether it is installed or not installed or it is outdated. It will simply update it. So this will be very easy to go uh, technique rather than just. Uh, using a GUI, GUI method, uh, it is very simple to do. So once these libraries are installed, you just need to uh, refresh your uh, Power BI and you can just click on Python visualization option. So this way you can create a visualization for Python. And here uh, you have to just drag into the columns or fields from the table and start coding. So you will be learning how to write Python course to create visualization charts in Power BI in the coming lessons. Uh, just make sure everything is installed 
and set into the place to before moving to writing scripting if you are done with this just uh, hit the next lessons or if you have any doubt just try to rectify this thing keep learning hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a line chart using matplotlib in power bi so let's start with this so first we just need to get our data source for that you just need to go to the get data and you can choose a various data source currently i am importing excel file so i will navigate through the excel file and here you got a worksheet just check the sheet that you want to import you may have multiple worksheets in different data sources currently i have one this thing and next uh, you just need to click on this python icon in the visualization panel uh, this is the python image that i have added don't worry um, just put it aside and here we just created a chart for python so just like you create a bar chart pie chart in the same way you can create a python chart so python chart will allow you to provide create a, a code for generating a chart so here just drop two values we take uh, the average values and site visitors and drop it into the values and next uh, some and some code is generated so these are the comments so you can either remove it and write it from fresh or you can continue with anywhere you want so once you're done just write a simple code to create a simple chart so line chart is most basic chart so just uh, first import this thing uh, write import matplotlib dot pyplot as a variable name uh, and provide a variable name say k1 you can write anything else so here yeah, this will import the matplotlib library and specifically pyplot function that we can use it so just provide a variable name that we can use you can write anything say i am writing k1 so just write k1 dot plot plot is a function here in matplotlib it will take the values of uh, data source data feeds so just write data set dot site visitor so site visitors is a column in our spreadsheet or in a table and we will use it as a axis and just write comma and write data set dot average time is spent so you may have two different uh, data columns data feed that can be provided as x and y axis and once you are done just write k1 dot show open and close brackets so it will generate a chart so once you are done just hit the run icon here you can execute it uh, and don't forget to remove go to values and change it to don't summarize by default uh, the column values are summed together are calculated but you don't want it them to be summarized and you because you want each individual points on the chart so this way we can have if you invert the order of uh, fields say if you put uh, average time is spent before then uh, site visitors it will change the axis for x and y axis okay so you, you may be careful here because the chart that you want if you want any particular field to be x-axis you can create it like that okay so take care of uh, the order of providing the data sets and here it is you can expand this chart you can scale it and you can go to the format tab where you can format this chart okay you can change the size of the title you can increase it its value so it may be more visible you can align it to the center of the screen you can change the font color uh, you may change the font type you can also change the title that is written you can change it you just write anything your name anything that you want so you got various options to customize this chart you can change the color of appearance you can change the color of line you can uh, rename this accesses and you can create a various chart this way so with the format tab you can format any of the chart 
be it with a python or you can have it in the different uh, charts in power bi so these allow you to customize you can change the color of your background for the text and this is it so we have we learned how to just create a simple line chart using matplotlib so the process is same you just need to follow it uh, you may import a data set put some of the columns that you want into the values option and once it is passed to the values you can just start writing your code so this is simple three line of code or it, it can be a single one line of code import is common Im importing a matplotlib library is a very common thing so if you don't count it it is just a single line of code so a single line of python code can generate amazing charts and you will learn how you can generate more charts in you know, a different advanced charts because power bi provides you a limited set of charts but if you want to customize your data uh, with the power of a programming language that is r or python you can easily maneuver this thing and you can create uh, most interestingly a custom chart that is not provided here in the cporn and the matplot library you got tremendous amount of visualization charts that you can use so if you're learning data science machine learning uh, business intelligence anything anything regarding uh, python power bi or such thing you can just combine these two powerful things and create amazing visualizations so keep learning and keep moving ahead you will learning more in the coming lessons hey welcome back friend in the previous lesson you learned how to create a line chart in power bi using matplotlib and here we can just convert this line chart into a different chart say a scatter plot or a dashed line chart or you can combine it to create a variety of charts so just modify this chart uh, here we have a zigzag line chart uh, based on the data set that you use you can create a different kind of line chart so we have just modified this data set a little bit so find this kind of chart so just add some line so first we want to add some labels to x and y axis so if you want to add some label to x axis the code will be simple just you use a variable k1 dot x label uh, within the brackets just write average time spent on the site uh, here because i want to display it on the screen on the x axis you can write anything say this is x axis anything we want and in the same way you can put the y label as well uh, within the quotes whatever you like uh, write will be appeared on the screen so here i uh, just put x and y label uh, on the screen say y label is site visitors per minute and x axis is average time spent on a site so this is a website data where uh, we have a range of data so this kind of zigzag line chart is formed we can create a, a scatter plot or a different chart as well so by default it is continuous line chart okay uh, you can go to the format tab to customize this chart as well as the background okay so just click the chart and go to the format tab if you want to customize anything otherwise just leave it uh, you may change some variables so just go to the plot function and here after the data set you take just write a comma and within single quotes uh, just write few things say if you write r uh, this line will change to red color okay r is small r don't write capital just write small r if you write y it will change to yellow color if you write g it will change to green color so these are the labels that you can use so if you want to convert the color of your chart you can convert this will not just work in this line chart it will work on any kind of chart that you use uh, using the matplotlib function if you just write v it will change to simple uh, triangle or dots on the screen small dots if you change it to a different thing it will change if you write o it will change to a scatter plot this will represent points okay if you write double dash it will create a dashed line not a continuous line 
dash line and if you write o dash dash it will create a scatter plot with a dashed line if you write a variable name say g g is a color green and just write double dash it will change it to green dashed line if you put r dash dash just put color code before dash symbol okay so first you need to define the color then you can define how it will be appearing if you write simple o it will convert to scatter plot okay so a scatter plot will show you the distribution of the points on the chart so each point will be represented in that way and you can identify the pattern or the outlier if you want line chart as well as a scatter plot you can combine it very easily just write double dash after o so don't get confused just experiment with a range of variables and you can customize this chart okay so sometimes you want this thing to appear uh, so because the data science is not just about creating charts using python or power bi you want to narrate some story okay so you may design this chart if you are from someone from designing background or even if you're not from designing background you may want your chart to appear nice decent you wear uh, clothes that you like uh, everyone is fashionable and uh, not everyone is a fashion designer but people wear a fashionable clothes will have uh, different things so just try to decorate your charts okay for decoration purpose you may require to customize and for customization you may learn more uh, functions and options here so you learn how to create a dash line chart just don't uh, when others are creating simple line chart you can create a dash line you can combine a scatter plot as well as dash line you can use a combination of colors uh, you can express uh, a different custom chart as well so just dive deeper into this just ask question uh, why everything is set to root default mode how i can customize it further so just try to customize everything and try to create your own charts uh, use a variety of data set and just keep building this thing so here it is you learned how to create three or four different kinds of chart you can use a format painter as well so once you created a customized chart you can copy the format and paste it under a different chart in power bi as well so you may use the power of both things python as well as power bi so empower your data science project keep learning keep moving hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a volume chart in python and power bi so let's start with this so first let us uh, import a data set and just select a data set here we got a data set with uh, four different columns and field and hit the load up button to get it loaded next uh, we are going to just create a python visualization uh, we are writing some code for matplotlib and cborn to create a chart here just take uh, two different fields uh, continent and average time is spent so continent will have the name of the continents of the world Asia Africa North America Europe South America and Australia and then uh, we got the uh, average time is spent on a website uh, for audience across the world so we had we have a data for each country and it is categorized in form of continent so volume chart will help you find the range distribution of values or either a concentration so you can identify either your values are concentrated to a particular uh, category or whether it is distributed equally across a range so let's write some code here we need to import two libraries matplotlib and seaborn seaborn will make your chart more attractive okay so volume plot is generally a seaborn function so just write a s2 dot c plot uh, we have created a variable s2 you can create anything else and just provide the data set uh, here x equals to data set within a square bracket and quotes you have to just provide the name of the variable so in the x axis we want to represent continents so just provide that thing and in the y axis we want to provide a value or a measure uh, average time is spent 
and don't forget to just make it don't summarize because you don't want to sum and here just uh, you can provide some more information like palette you can define a palette uh, in a different color uh, red green blue just choose uh, blue for now you can change the color as well so this is a single line definition of creating a boiling plot this is how you create just use the matplotlib variable to run the show function and hit run the script and once uh, you run the script it will create a chart and it will appear on the screen so right now it is summarized so don't forget to uh, change it just go to the field and hit don't summarize because we want different values so this is how your violent chart will look like so we can find very easily that in asia it is very uh, equally distributed across a wide range so countries in asia have a wide range of uh, average time spent on a website while we got some concentrated result in australia and some other continents it is somewhat uh, evenly distributed in europe but in asia it is evenly distributed okay in north and south america we got high concentration towards the upper end of uh, this chart of the average view duration so average view duration is maximum in africa it is uh, next in south america and north america and it is minimum in australia okay this is simple interpretation uh, these are uh, a different kind of values you can identify whether your values are distributed across a range evenly distributed or whether they are concentrated so violin chart is the best or uh, very creative way to represent this thing and you can create a violin chart using this code in cbond and matplotlib so try to create your own violin chart with a data set that you have and just examine things keep learning and keep moving ahead Hey, welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn more about creating a violin chart in the previous lesson we have created a violin chart uh, using matplotlib and cborn libraries in python so just create a new uh, report in power bi just by clicking this plus icon on the bottom of the screen and then you can create a same python visualization chart and drop two different fields earlier uh, we have used continent and average time spent this time we are going to use site visitor uh, visitors number of site visitors as well as continent so we will get a different kind of violin formation Th we are going to use this for the same reason we want to identify the distribution range or concentration of values over the set uh, across different categories here we have the category as continent uh, and just modify this thing a little bit you can change the palette appearance from blue to green or red or any different color as well so just make it tone summarize so this way your chart will appear like this so here uh, you can find the chart appears a little bit different yeah say in south america you got most of the values concentrated in the center okay so it has this uniform bulging appearance in the center and on the lower or upper end it has a smooth and down or narrowed while in asia it is weird that uh, we don't have a concentration in the center it is little bit compressed it has the hilly formation so just go back to the previous uh, volume chart it was completely different from what uh, what we have this thing now okay so here it is it has a different kind of formations the formation of asia and europe tends to appear like same while in africa we got multiple values of uh, site visitors but this time we have more concentration on the higher end okay so we can simply identify that in the previous violin chart it was mostly uneven distribution because every continent ha has a different kind of formation okay they had a different preference uh, asia and europe was uh, evenly distributed asia was very evenly distributed but it was on the lower end and 
with Africa, South America and North America sharing the similar kind of formation and they were on the higher end of this chart. Okay, and Australia was in the center somewhat, but they were concentrated in a range bound situation. While here all the charts have a, almost a similar size where the formation is a little bit different. Okay, so you can change the color of how you want to make it appear. By default, it is shades of blue. The palette is blue. It has multiple tones, color palettes. You can change it to red. Just rename blues to reds or greens. You have to place S because this is the format uh, this variable is passed. If you do a spelling mistake, it won't produce a result. Okay, so don't get worried because you are running a code. Uh, there could be some kind of uh, syntax error or a spelling mistake. So be open. If you find uh, some error, it, uh, it is not showing a visualization chart. Uh, just click that thing to know more. And in that case, you will learn how where thing gone wrong. It will show you that uh, unable to identify green because uh, greens is a variable that is taken here. You have to place an extra s, okay. And also, if you write red in a small, starting with r in a small case, it won't be able to compile it either. So just focus on this kind of thing. If you don't have a coding background, if you have a coding background, you already know how to deal with this kind of situation. So be courageous and create a data set. Enjoy creating a volume chart. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a strip plot using Python and Power BI. So let's start with this. So let us first create a new report and here we are using the same data set that we used previously. And now let us create a table. You can create a table uh, by hitting the table visualization and just drop the columns that you want. Here we want two different fields or columns average time is spent and site visitors both are the measures and we will turn it to don't summarize because we don't want the sum of the values we want each distinct values and later on you can convert a chart to a different chart by just clicking selecting this chart and hit the python uh, icon so this will uh, create a python visualization chart so your table will be gone and now you can just uh, See this code where uh, your data set is passed through the pandas library and your data set is created. Okay, and we need this data set to create a strip plot. You can skip this step of using a table. You can directly just drop the fields or the columns and start writing. So what we are going to write is uh, just import the matplotlib library and seaborn. We will be using these two things. So just write import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt you can use any variable that you want uh, hit enter for the next line and then we are going to run this strip plot method and we will pass through uh, x and y coordinates uh, for these two fields average time is spent into the x-axis and we will plot uh, site visitors into the y-axis so it will create a two axis and here we will define the variable as data set for stored in a data variable and later on we can update it to have uh, some palette markers edge and it will create a beautiful chart so what is a strip plot a strip plot will consist of multiple distinct points it it will function as a uh, in the same way as a scatter plot but it will be a little bit different here you got more control options it will be visually more appealing you can change the shape of uh, each single point you can make it circle diamond hexagon anything and it will have a colorful effect this is the power of c bond so if you want simple looking chart you can just use a matplotlib default charts otherwise if you want your chart to be more appealing you can use the c bond package in a, on the combination with a matplotlib library and here we can scale it and just create uh, this thing and in the next lesson you will learning more about this strip plot in depth keep learning welcome back friend 
now moving forward with a strip plot that we created previously and now just add some more properties by defining them and we can customize this chart and make it visually more appealing so just put a comma after uh, you put the data set you define the data set and then just define a palette and just write palette uh, equals to set to set to within the quotes you can use various sets that are there uh, with this uh, strip plot and it will have some visual implications and then you can define the size of individual dots or points so let's make it anything uh, let's keep it a small for now uh, later on we can increase it to show the effect and just put the marker equals to d so d means diamond so it will be in the shape of diamond if you want to have it in a hexagonal hexagonal form you can just put a h in place of d and then put a h color equals to green you could have a different kind of h color h color are not the points color it is a different thing and then you can have the alpha alpha means transparency so 0.8 just uh, 0.25 anything so if you want a more transparent uh, thing you can have a lower value of alpha if you want to reduce the transparency you can have this thing higher value of alpha don't put it more than one uh, one means 100 percent uh, opaque and zero means 100 percent transparent so this way you can do it and once if you even if you got some error uh, you if you don't have a coding background uh, you can just hit uh, on this option to sh show the error and you will learn what are the real errors and you can fix it there could be simple syntax errors a spelling mistake or sometimes you require it requires you to be quote case sensitive where uppercase and lowercase are there so if your green argument is defined in a small letter and you put first g of the green into the capital it could be a problem okay while it is compiling or executing so here we got a simple chart and we got an average size of diamond charts that are colorful and here we got two kind of strips first strip on the top side and second is on the bottom side when we reduce the increase the value of alpha say make it 0.8 it will be more opaque and less transparent when we change the size uh, marker uh, from d to h it will change to hexagonal and in the same way we can increase the size of uh, these individual markers or points by just changing the value of the size you can change the color edge color or make it a different thing and it will show some sometimes it will show some error you can either refresh if your data set is being updated if you're working with the live data sometimes this kind, this kind of error may also appear uh, currently i'm using a desktop version so it won't have an, a problem in offline desktop but if you're working in a real time and your data gets updated there could be few errors so it is better to refresh okay and then if you want to compile it you can compile it and make the size larger here just uh, you can have a different size if you have a very large size the points will overlap if you want to have a decent size it depends okay so it depends on you you could also create multiple charts in the same way to identify anything this will help you identify uh, some kind of pattern underlying pattern in a visually appealing so when we increase the, the size is very large and reduce the value of alpha it will be translucent it will look like a, some glassy object that is shiny just keep it little bit smaller in size and you can control the value of alpha so this kind of control will um, emphasize your chart and it will help you narrate some kind of a story that can be conveyed with your data interpretations okay so don't uh, learn just python coding or uh, some data parameters just also focus on how you want to represent your data visually as well as verbally uh, when you're presenting it so try this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a box plot in power bi so let's start with this 
so you can create a box plot using uh, Python libraries such as matplotlib and seaborn. So in the first part, this part we are going to use uh, with the matplotlib and in the next lesson you are going to learn about seaborn. So box plot is uh, by default not available as a visualization chart in Power BI and if you require uh, to create some box plot uh, you need to write some code uh, you can write code either in r or python we are using python so let's do it so here we need to import matplotlib library for having the box method box plot method to execute and we'll pass our uh, two parameters two fields into the parameters here we got uh, two parameters as uh, we have the by and the column so column will show you the column values it will uh, the box plot is uh, identical to candlestick charts uh, those who are in the financial markets know what is a candlestick chart so candlestick charts have the high low open and close values okay uh, box plot is similar to that but here we don't have a high low value but it will plot it using some box so you will have a wick or a candle like structure here and it could be used for various reasons and various scenarios so we are not going to in depth where you can use the box plot you may al already be a, some kind of expert on this thing so just learn how to uh, create this box plot okay so just pass these two parameters uh, you can uh, make a grid in the background uh, by enabling it uh, and pass to true method and when we try to run this code we find a simple error so can't display this visual just go to into details see more you will find the error most of the time it would be simple syntax error like uh, here we have here on the last line you can read that uh, name error name false is not defined so simple here is error is very simple uh, false is written in a small case okay when we are using a boolean expression uh, we require the first character to be capital be it true or false so when we change it it will run okay so it will execute and now we see a simple line just because of we don't summarize we summarized it okay by default it is set to summarize you can turn it to don't summarize or either you can set the settings in the power bi itself so it will by default set to don't summarize but in various cases uh, we require to be summarized so thus we don't do it here you can see the box is not uh, created simply because we jumbled the column and row so just uh, replace them so in place of site visitor just write average time spent and vice versa and here you got uh, the box plot so this is how you create a simple box plot in power bi try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend in the previous lesson you learned how to create a simple box plot and now we are going to create some advanced kind of box plot uh, that will allow you to have a good visuals uh, we are going to use the seaborn library just uh, use the same matplotlib library as well and we will have both of these so make sure uh, your computer has both of the libraries installed and here just uh, pass the same arguments or the fields and x and y axis so just write y equals to average time is spent within the quotes and you pass uh, this argument into the y axis and for the x axis you pass the site visitors okay uh, you can flip either of them to see uh, some different kind of chart but it depends on you okay so what argument you want to put in x or y axis so box plot uh, why they are used simply because uh, a box consists of uh, divides into multiple sections uh, which consist of the 25 percent of the data in a set okay so they will divide and it is similar to candlestick charts and it will quickly provide you a visual summary of uh, the enabling data for quick quickly identify the mean values so you have a different values and a range of values and you can easily identify what is the mean at a particular point so it is widely used it can be used uh, for various reasons uh, where you want to quantitatively analyze the values 
or the distribution of different quantities on a data set so higher bigger the box you find this thing and you can find the center line that is the mean and you can find where the mean is if a mean is right in the center you find this values if it is it tends towards the lower end you find it like in the dark green box and on the right hand side you in the pink bar you get uh, it uh, the mean is in the, on the higher end okay so box plot is useful and box plot with seaborn looks uh, more appealing it is colorful it has a uh, various options and you can go to the format tab to further control it further customize it you can change the color you can uh, make the title appear on the darker sides you can add x and y coordinate labels and much more okay so just go to the customization tab and customize things say if you want uh, the text alignment you can change it to vertical alignment top alignment you can set the wallpaper color into different color so this will change the background if you select the chart it will change it in different way you can customize both the dashboard in power bi as well as a chart if you have a multiple chart they will be interacted otherwise you can have this thing so you can just uh, try take some data set and try to create a box plot um, either by using a simple matplotlib technique or you can combine the seaborn technique it is simple it is simple one line of code if you want to make it more advanced uh, you may pass multiple variables as well okay so let us first uh, just change it the title into the center just align it into the center change the color you can change the color of text you can change the text itself you can customize it a little bit say if you want to add some tooltip you can do so if you want to uh, add some text like your box plot is representing something if you want to add some notes here you can also add so a visualization created with power bi can be used for various reasons it can be used for data science for business intelligence it can be used for uh, data interpretations a lot of things okay from personal use to commercial use uh, or, or anything so be open to learn anything and everything regarding python data science and power bi keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating an lm plot or a line plot in python uh, and power bi so let's start with this so this is a custom chart that we can draw to show some trend line and with various points uh, just like a scatter plot they will be shown on either side of the line so uh, just click on the python uh, in the visualization panel and here you can create a chart and start coding and just drop a few columns here uh, we are using the same two columns average time is spent and site visitors and just write the code here we would require a simple matplotlib library we will import the pyplot uh, functionality here and we will use the cborn library of python so just write uh, declare the import statement here and after that just write i plot equals to uh, the object for cborn s7 and use the function lm plot you create this lm chart and here you provide those two fields or columns into the parameters x and y uh, say in x just put average time spent on on y put site visitors then you need to define the data set and pass it into a data variable and then we can simply show it and run so just write the show statement it will use the matplotlib function sometimes uh, people used to forget write uh, the show method and thus your chart is not shown on the screen and now just turn it to don't summarize or if you want to summarize it will still show so here you got uh, multiple points that appear on the chart and here in the center you got a trend line that is linear so it can be used to show the alignment of these values 
it can be used for uh, advanced calculations it could be used for uh, machine learning and complex mathematical situations where there is to use you could also add a side note here uh, using a text you can add a text you can add an image you can go to the format tab and put some formatting here it is simple and it is one of the complex chart if you want to take uh, the variance median average all the sum of values you can just do it otherwise just set it to don't summarize it will be well and good so try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hey friend welcome back in this lesson i'm going to tell you that what are the packages and libraries which will require throughout the plotly series this is my environment named DataViz, where i've already installed all the libraries and packages related to data science machine learning and of course data visualization okay so first of all what i'm going to do here is to open the jupyter notebook and to open the jupyter notebook you can just simply write jupyter space notebook and it will going to create a server for jupyter and where you can easily create the jupyter notebook either you can use google collab or any other things but i prefer generally this jupyter notebook okay now here i'm going to import some of the libraries and to show the version which i'm using right now 5.1.0 which is the latest one while at the time i'm recording this course and i'm going to now show you that how you can simply create the basic charts with the help of this plotly this is how you can use iplot to plot your line chart and simply remove the i from your i plot it will going to open the new tab okay from where you can download that particular chart zoom in zoom out and then you, you have the option for pan then there's option for auto scale as well and lots of other options are available with this plotly it makes your chart more interactive than any other data visualization libraries and packages like matplotlib ggplot bouquet or any other it makes a little bit more interactive that's why i prefer using this plotly okay now the next thing which you have to do is the very very necessary step that how you can create the environment and how you can install the libraries and the packages meanwhile i'm going to show you a chart how to create a simple line chart i'm going to extract it that particular uh, quote snippet from the official plotly website to show you that how it will going to work to create a simple line chart with the help of plotly express okay so why i did all these things the the thing is i'm just showing that all the setups which i have right now will going to produce a beautiful chart and plotly is working fine okay don't worry i'm going to use my own data sets and this is for only demo purpose that's why i just use the official website data set and the their code snippets okay so this is anaconda navigator and here you will get lots of lot of packages and for my database as i said you i have already installed various libraries and packages related to machine learning data science and so on things okay so that's why we have lots of things here so for you you must have plotly you must have dash the pandas and as well as the numpy these are some of the packages you, which you must have inside your environment so either you can use google collab or jupyter but you need to have these packages for now keep learning keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i've shown you that how you can create the simple line chart now in this part i'm going to create another line chart but with different data set this time i'm going to use stock market data sets okay so here i'm going to create my dummy data sets for stock market as well for it um, the first thing which i will require here is the stock price the random stock price and that random stock price will be like um, 40 then sometimes uh, 20 then sometimes increasing and sometimes decreasing okay that's how the stock market work that there will be company there will be ups and downs over the time okay so here 
I will going to generate a random stock prices and then I'm going to um, create a list from year 1999 to 2021 okay so this will be the whole data set for me and here I'm again using this random function to generate my dummy data sets okay so here I have created the variable for change which will going to add into my prices and then I'm going to append that price into my list okay so this is the logic behind to create the dummy data sets okay isn't it easy yes it is easy so whenever you are going to rerun this cell it will going to create again and again the random data okay sometimes it can give the um, negative value if you wish to add the minus 40 instead of 40 okay that's why I'm just using the 40 positive post 40 so whenever I'm going to create the um, the line chart then you will find that the stock price is just increased just like a compounder stocks okay compounder stocks are those stocks which over time increase only okay so here I'm going to just going to create a line graph for a compounder stocks okay through which over time it just increased never decreased okay so here I'm going to create a list for my year and here I'm just doing this the only thing is to increase the number from 1992 to 2000 until it will iterate till the 22nd times okay so this is the logic behind to create a list of years now with the help of this two list I'm going to create the dictionary dictionary is like having there will be one key and for that there will be corresponding value will be there so here I in my data set you will require these two things which is stock price and the date the year so I'm going to create a what I'm going to create a dictionary and in this dictionary there will be two values and the two keys keys will be year and the stock price and the value will be the list so this is the uh, dictionary where you can give your keys and values okay as you can see the length of both the list is 22 so you can easily create the dictionary make me sure that the length of both of the list must be same okay so this is how you can create the dictionary and then dictionary is converted into the data frame okay so we have now our dummy data set our dummy data frame now i'm going to create the line chart for this data okay now you need to import this plotly library and write down the figure equal to px dot line and then you need to pass the data frame which is the input and the x and y okay so this is how you can easily create the line chart as as said that it it is a chart for the compounder stocks which over the time increased only okay now let me put some negative value here like minus 40 okay now rerun all the cells and let's see that what kind of charts will be going to be created and as you can see that sometimes it increased and sometimes it decreased ups and downs are there this looks like a much um, similar to any kind any stock price for any stock let me read in the cells again and this time okay the value is in negative so if you want that this kind of condition will never occur you need to put some if and else condition as well so that it will going to absolute this situations okay instead of minus 40 i think minus 20 will be a better option for us again read on the cells and you can see uh, a chart which don't have any negative value as well and it increased over the time but sometimes uh, there there was time when it was in the bearish mode okay so this is how you can create your dummy sets and then you can able to create the line chart 
and this is not only the line chart it is also you can say the time data time and data chart okay so i'm now going to create uh, another dummy data set for another company a okay and here i'm going to do the same thing but this time i'm going to replace it with the suffix of a and all the variables which i think should be changed okay so i think we have we did uh, some changes which are required to create the dummy set for company a okay so this is kind of time series chart okay where there will be some times will be there in the x-axis and in the y-axis there will be some values in our case the value of stock price over the time so this this is not only line chart you can also say it as a time series chart okay now i'm going to use the graph objects okay so so that i will be easily merge two charts in the same graph okay so you need to just import plotly.graph as go and then figure you need to initialize the instance for figure in case of graph object then you need to add traces okay and while creating the line chart using this graph object you need to use the scatter option okay scatter is like some points some data points which are scattered all around your graph that's why we name it as a scatter chart and here it will going to um, connect all the dots connect all the data points to create the line chart so here i'm going to add all of those things here and create a line chart a merged line chart where there will be the stock price value for two companies one is company which i created earlier and then company a okay so this is how this whole thing work it is very easy to use plotly because you don't need to um have you don't need to write any complex code here it's just simple just like writing in leaks okay so this is the best thing which i can see here okay so the changes which i'm doing here is like stock price of company two will be okay rather than saying the company a okay and i don't think so that anything any changes required here okay it's like no module name plotly job oh yes the the library is the module is graph object okay now i have got another error which is stock price of company two okay uh, this is the column name which i supposed to have and and i don't think so that any kind of problem is there okay 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 i understand okay okay that data frame which i've used doesn't have that column it is in data frame one so this is the graph of two stock prices of different companies let me rerun the cell for company two as you can see now the charts look similar they are in upward direction but sometimes there is some fall is there and sometimes there is up is there sometimes bear pair is there sometimes there is bullish pair but most of the time it is uh, bullish in nature that's why we can call it as a compounder stock and in plotly you can select the different companies particularly okay now this is all about line chart or you can say time series chart i hope you have understand the difference between line chart and the time series chart time series chart will totally focused on like one x-axis or either y-axis but most of the times in x-axis there will be the time will be there and in the the line chart there is no type of criteria that that particular axis will going to be the time okay you can put any variables you want to and show it on the basis of the line chart okay so in the next lesson we're going to talk 
more about different kinds of chart which you can produce using this plotly till now keep learning keep exploring what's up guys welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to talk about scatter chart let's do it so first of all i'm going to import the panda library and then the random library as well because these are the libraries which i'm going to use here okay so here i'm going to talk about the scatter chart why do we need the scatter chart the first question which really hit in your mind like scatter chart is very useful in the field of data science as well the data analytics then your machine learning when you're going to deal with some kind of linear regressions and many other problems okay so in this scatter chart what is actually happen that there will be some values in x variable then there will be some values in y variable and you're going to put down that all that data points into your graph and scatter all around the your graph that's why we call it as a scatter chart or you can scatter graph so here first of all i'm going to create my own dummy data sets with the help of this random uh, library i'm going to generate the random values and put into my data frame and then we're going to create our scatter chart okay so through which our scatter chart we can collect some relationship between two variables as well you can also collect the correlationship between the variables okay so these are the some major points which you must know while creating the scatter chart okay now here as uh, in my dummy data set i'm putting the 10 companies will be there and with their random stock price will be there then random volume will be there and then random change in the price will be there change in price simply means the price which is today and the price in the previous day and the change between them i'm going to put into my change in price so here i have the four list one is name stock price volume and the change in price and then i have created the for loop and it will iterate until and unless for 10th iterations as the length of my name list is 10 okay because we have the 10 companies and with the help of this random in function i'm going to generate the dummy values and as there is two values around my bracket this simply means the value will be between the value 1 and the value 2 okay so this is my for loop to generate the random values and create a dummy data sets now I'm going to put all these um, list values into my dictionary as we know that dictionary have two things one is key and one is the values so in the key key is basically the our name our stock price our change in price or and the volume will be there and in the value I'm going to put the list okay so in this way I'm actually creating the dictionary and later on I'm going to put this dictionary values into my data frame and data frame is the main thing through which we we are going to create our any other charts this is like input thing which you need to put down and then you can able to create which is a graph or chart okay so this is my data frame and i think i made some mistake here okay i forgot to replace the values okay now i'm going to read on this desk and this is the new data frame with the dummy values around okay so i love to play with random values because we're going to get some randoms um, chart okay so sometimes it, it will not look like it can be feasible or not but yes the, th that's the beauty of using the random data okay so now the main game is to create the scatter chart here so first of all you need to import this plotly.express and then I'm going to use this figure for my variable and then px.scatter and here you need to put the data frame, the x value and the y value and here I'm going to use the stock price and the change in the percentage and to show the relationship between them okay that's the main thing okay so you need to put down all your values here and Later on, I'm going to show you that what kind of relationship I'm extracting from this chart. Okay. So that write y equal to the change in price. Change in price simply means like today is 10 rupees, earlier was 8 rupees, then there's a change in 25% today. Okay. That's that is a thing which which is will be there in the change in price. Okay, this this is the my scatter chart. As I said, 
that the points will be scattered all around the my graph that's why it is called as a scatter chart you can see the price which are lower than 70 having a high change in price rather than the price above 70 having a high price but some of them are in negative so this is the relationship i'm extracting from this scatter chart actually i don't think so that this relationship will going to be take to some point but yes that's you can call it as a scatter chart and you can put into your problem statements and then derive the meaningful insights so that's all this is all about scatter chart in next video i'm going to add some more things into my scatter chart okay so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep data visualizing okay hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can build a scatter plot in few steps and here i'm going to add some more things into my scatter plot now as i have used the plotly to build my scatter plot as you can see that while hovering over my plot it's giving the information about the data points so this is the advantage of using plotly or any other data visualization libraries like matplotlib cbon ggplot and various other one that's why i use this plotly because it makes a uh, little bit more interactive and it is also visually appearing so that's why plotly have uh, some advantages over any other visualization libraries okay now i'm going to add some titles into my scatter plot as it is very important to add scat uh, this titles into your plot so that your audience could understand that what kind of data you are showing you are representing to them okay so titles are very very important thing a very very important component as well which should be added into your plot okay now i'm going to add some colors into my uh, the scatter plot till now that the only color it used which was blue for each and every company now adding this color will be like it will going to give a uh, different colors for different companies as it is interactive you can um, select and deselect each of them okay and you can see that it is showing the information all about the company just pouring down the your graph okay and uh, now i'm going to add the symbols into my this plot yeah that color is also symbolizing the same thing the symbol will be going to do like they actually showing that they represent the different the unique identity okay so you, as you can see that the, it created a uh, random symbols to my each of my company okay so as you can see that i have selected some of the portion for my chart and there's option for downloading it into PNG, zoom in, zoom out, then pan to like to move around your graph, then the box to select that particular point and to compare with other point. If all the points will be faded out, and then there is like zoom in, zoom out, then there is option for auto scales. Lots of options are available there with this plotly. That's the amazing. That's too much. And uh, I'm going to add now some more things into my plot now it's better to add some titles over my each and every data points okay so instead of using the colors the symbol you can also add the text over your data points okay this adding some colors is like visually appealing okay and the symbols too play the same role but adding text will be like yes that that points is for that company okay it gives the instant information about that data point now as you can see that the text which i've added is it's just over my data points and it doesn't look attractive so what i'm going to do i'm just going to change the position for my text for it you need to update the traces and here there is uh, there will be many options with there as you can see here so among them i'm going to use one of them and put down there and see the result okay so i think this top right will be best to add to change the location for my text other than it there are 
many options like top left bottom right bottom left and so on there, there's a permutation around between four directions okay so i'm going to add this top right here and you can see that the text position is now changed to the top right okay and this looks better than the previous one isn't it so this is all about that how you can add text into your graph and change the position of your text and so on things even you can change the font style as well the size of your font all of the options you can change here okay this is the power of using this plotly chart and uh, one more thing i think i should do here is to update the x-axis okay so to represent the data from 1 to 100 or you can say 0 to 100 so it will look a little bit uh, not looking like a misleading charts you know there is some charge is a misleading one which will going to convey their audience in their way okay so avoid to create the misleading charts and here i have updated the x-axis 0 to 100 and there is will be a step of 10 like 0 10 20 30 and so on so this is how you can update the x-axis even i'm going to change the axis for my y as well and you need to just add the y instead of x and you know that the values were between minus 10 and 10 that's why i just given the range between minus 10 and 10 and here i'm going to give a step of 2 okay so like it will be like 0 2 4 in upward direction 0 minus 2 minus 4 in the downward direction so here you can update both all on x and y axis you can also update the text positions you can update the text font style the size and many other things i hope you have understand a lot of the options you can use in this chart and with the help of plotly in the next lesson we're going to a deep dive into some more graphs and figures okay so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep visualizing hey guys welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create the scatter chart and the dot chart with the help of that symbols now in this part you will going to learn that how you can create the bubble chart bubble chart is an extension to scatter chart earlier in scatter chart we have to make a relationship between two numerical values but with the help of bubble chart you can also put the third variable as well okay and here the third variable will be our volume that will going to define the size of bubble okay earlier that was only the dot points were scattered all around the graph but this time with the help of the bubble chart we can able to add one more dimension to our data set to our chart which is our volume and with the help of volume we will going to plot a chart with different size of bubbles okay let me show you that how it will going to work so first of all this is my data frame and i'm going to create the random data set again and this is the yeah this is for to create a simple scatter chart and here I'm going to remove this symbol portion and instead of writing symbols I'm going to mention the size the size is the size of our bubble okay now here you need to put the volume here okay some typographical mistake were there okay now I've correct the spelling of volume and now I'm going to put volume here okay so let me Show you that how our bubble chart will look like so you can see now there is a bubble chart is around my graph with the different size let me read on this cell the random data set okay and again i need to re revise these cells again to initiate the data frame and yes instead of rerunning that particular cells the size was not too much uh, unchanged okay so it's better to increase the range okay previously it was 5000 to 10000 so we are unable to see the 
uh, difference between the different sizes of the bubbles okay and this time i think that there yeah you can see that that now the size of the bubbles are having a difference some are very small and some are a little bit bigger than the smaller one so this is how you can plot the bubble chart and it is the difference between the scatter chart and the dot chart okay so for now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back here in this lesson we're going to talk all about pie chart pie chart is one of the most popular chart which is best to use when we are trying to work out with composition with something like here we are going to use different sectors of the stock market like financials healthcare it etc and then we're going to find out the weightage of the sector in terms of their occurrence i mean auto 26 company three is for healthcare four is for it five for finance and so on and at last we're going to create our pie chart to visualize that composition as always we're going to create our own data set so let's create them as there will be 26 company in our indices let's name them in the alphabetical order okay now we're going to use the random choice function to associate our company with the random sectors and the first thing which we can do is to add all the sectors into this data frame and then convert it into the list okay so once you have the list with all the sector name then we can easily associate our company with different sectors so now just write down np dot random choice and here you need to put the data frame which is df1 which i have created for the sectors just write down df1 sectors to list which means that we are converting our data frame column into the list and then you need to uh, specify the size which is the length of our data frame the original data frame so now we have created a data frame with two columns one column determines the name of our stock and other column determines the sector name okay and whenever you're going to run this cell it will going to generate that random thing okay now i'm going to use this collection method which will going to count that how many times that particular sector occurred in that whole data frame okay it is very easy to use this collection method so that you don't need to put all this for loop or while loop to count each of them it saves a lot of time that's why i use this collection method now you will get the counter object you need to convert that counter object to the dictionary and then i'm going to convert this dictionary into the data frame okay once we have the new data frame we can easily create our pie chart to visualize our composition okay and here as dictionary we have a key and the value format we're going to define the key as sector and the value as the occurrence for the column of our new data frame which is new df and column so this is how it works that we have the sectors and we have the occurrence of particular sectors okay now i'm going to use the plotly express library to create our pie chart and just write down pi equal to px dot pi and you need to mention your data frame your value and the name and here value is the occurrence the numeric value and the name will be the sector okay so here i'm going to find out the composition of our indices and on the basis of the different sectors okay now let title it as a sector wise composition okay now i'm going to show this figure just write down pi dot show and it will going to generate our pie chart okay there will it will be values not value here and same for name okay you need to add the s at the last so this is the pie chart how it looks like it denotes that the percentage of particular sector and here each slice represents the different sectors now i'm going to create a new pie chart in the terms of the stocks for it i'm going to create a new column for my data frame it which is weightage and here 
I'm going to give the equal weightage to each of the stocks and now I'm going to remove this sector factor and now we are totally focusing on the stocks name and the their weightage which is 3.84 approx because when you're going to divide this 100 divided by 26 it will going to give 3.84 something and once you're going to add all of that figure it will going to generate 99.99 something because all the values is in the float value okay now we have the numeric value the weightage and we have our stocks and now we're going to create a new pie chart and here i'm going to just do some of the changes like we're going to change the data frame name and the value which, which is now weightage and the name is the stock okay i'm also going to change the name of, of my title as well because it is now stock was composition so this is how this a new pie chart look like and one thing you must see here and you maybe observe it as well like if you're going to add more and more slices into your pie chart it will not going to look a attractive one and the end user will be getting confused at what kind of data you are showing to him or her so it's very very important thing you must know that if you want to show the your data in the form of the pie chart try to limit the number of slices max to max seven slices will be okay okay if you're going to add some more slices then it will be a little bit uh, untidy or you can say uh, unattractive okay so this is a key note which i want to convey you and this is all about pie chart and in the next part we're going to discuss donut and the sunburst chart till now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have discussed all about pie chart here in this lesson you are going to learn about donut chart let me revise some of the points which i discussed in my previous section a uh, pie chart basically it is a circular graph which represents the individual categories in the form of the slices whereas in this donut chart which is a variant of the pie chart but it has a hole in its center and it will going to display the categories in the form of arc rather than the slices and if you get some of the spaces between center then you can add some more information into your donut chart so this is one of the advantage of donut chart over the pie chart and as i say that the, the only difference is the whole so you need to add the whole attribute and give any value ranges from 0 to 1 okay i think 0.6 look better than 0.3 now i'm going to create another donut chart for my stock voice composition so just paste it here and again i'm going to add that whole attribute into this so this is how this pie chart and donut chart can be easily created with the help of plotly just adding the whole attribute okay and the best part is that as i'm using the plotly chart then you can easily interact with your chart okay you can uh, you can opt the options which you want to have like you can choose the different sectors in your compositions okay so this is how this plotly have a action so let me compare with like healthcare with different sectors like healthcare with finances that it is about 80 20 percent okay so this is how this donor chart looks like and we'll be going to discuss the sunburst chart in the next lesson hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have told you that how you can create pie chart donut chart now in this part i'm going to discuss that how you can create the sunburst chart so what is sunburst chart you can also name it as a ring chart or you can say multi-level pie charts or radial tree map okay because these type of chart used in to visualize the hierarchical data structure like uh, a sunburst chart will going to consist an inner circle and it is surrounded by rings of deep hierarchy level and then the angle is distributed accordingly the percentage for that particular parent node okay so here i'm going to create the sunburst chart and as here i'm defining the path okay 
you need to define the path like from parent to the child okay and here for me in our data set the parent is the sector and then the next child will be my stock names okay and here it will going to distribute the angle with the help of the values given in the weightage okay so this is how you can easily create the sunburst chart now let me show you that how it will look like here i'm just going to create a level 2 sunburst chart you can also increase the levels as you you're going to define the path accordingly okay and here is only one parent is there and one child is there that's why it comes under the level 2 category so this is how the sunburst chart will look like in the inner circle there is a weightage for the parents node which is the categories for our stocks like some financials there the materials then it and so on and once you are going to tap one of them one of the inner slice it will going to open that outer one okay as you can see for this consumer here there are th uh, three stocks out there okay now once again tap it again and this is for materials j h x v and l comes under into it okay so it have a greater percentage as compared to that one then there is real estate there are only two stocks related to that real estate so this is how you can represent your hierarchical data with the help of sunburst chart if you're not going to put the hierarchical data it will just look like a simple donut chart okay so this is the major difference between the pie chart the donut chart and the sunburst chart hope you have understand the difference between and create accordingly for now keep learning keep exploring hey friend welcome back here in this lesson you are going to learn that how you can create the bar chart first and first we are going to import the panda library as it makes importing and analyzing of the data much easier then with the help of read excel function as my data is in the form of excel file so i'm using this read excel function to read my data set if you have any other kind of data set you need to use that particular function like for csv you need to use read csv function now let me show you that how our data set will look like the name of our data set is ownership.xls okay now as you can see here that there are four columns are there one is year and then three different categories of the ownership promoters fidi and the public this fidi simply means foreign institutional investors and di simply means domestic institutional investors okay and it is very important to know the change in the percentage over the time in the different categories while doing the fundamental analysis of any stock or any company as with time if there is change in the ownership continuously the frequency is the high that simply means that something is wrong with that company or anything else okay so this is very important factor you must know while doing any kind of fundamental analysis okay now let us focus on the creating the path chart as you can see that i simply import this plotly.express um, after creating our data frame because i'm not that type of guy which put all the libraries and the packages in the very very beginning and don't know when to use what okay so i simply import my packages anywhere anytime okay so let's leave this now you must know that at x-axis you want to put which variable and on y-axis which variable you're going to put okay as it is a bar chart there will be some rectangular bars will be there and by default when you're going to create the bar chart it will be in um, vertical form okay so this is the bar chart how it looks like like on the y-axis the value for promoter percentage is there and on the x-axis the time is there the year is there okay now we have the three different categories i'm going to add those also but later on first of all i'm going to add the title into my bar chart as it is very important to add this title so that your end user your audience will able to understand that what kind of data is represented with the help of the chart okay so i'm just simply going to write like 
shareholding pattern for the promoters now let me run this cell you can see that the title is now showing just above our bar chart okay now I'm going to um, change the colors of the bar okay so with time it will going to change the color so let me change the variable name and add one attribute which is color and here I'm going to put the ear okay so on the basis of the ear the different ear it will going to change the color of the bars so let us run the cell this is the cell okay so this is how it works it's showing the different color form for different ear okay the latest one is in yellow color and the oldest one is in blue color and then there's some color maps there and accordingly it is changing the color of the bars so this is all about the bar chart the basic bar chart in the next lesson i'm going to describe some more advanced features of the bar chart and the different type also guys welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to tell you that how you can put um the multiple variables into your bar chart in my previous lesson i have just created the basic bar chart with only one variable like uh, i've just used the promoter's percentage now in this um, lesson we're going to learn that how you can add the multiple variables as there were three different categories which comes under ownership like promoters public then fidis so for it i'm going to create the list for it okay like let me add that categories so it's better to use this df dot columns and now i'm going to copy all that different categories and paste it here so this is uh, my different categories of ownership now instead of just promoters i'm gonna use this y list now let me run this so it's now showing that three different categories okay in the stack format okay let me um remove this color attribute so it will going to give the color according to that ownership one okay so as you can see that for blue it is showing for promoters for red it is showing for fidis and for green which is for public as it is plotly chart it is very very interactive you can choose what the option you want to show okay like for fidi you, you can see that it is in the decreasing manner and for promoters it is in increasing manner okay so this is how this plotly interactive chart looks like and uh, this is the chart in the form of the stacked format okay and you can also use the grouped one also so let me use the bar mode to create the group chart the group bar chart okay and there are basically three popular um types of bar mode one is stacked one which i already shown you and then this is group one and the last one is relative okay as you can see in this group bar chart the very first bar doesn't have the green bar because at the very beginning that value for public chart was zero okay and with time then there is change in the percentage of the ownership in different categories okay this is all about and uh, the group bar chart look like and the stacked bar chart look like and in the next lesson we're going to learn some more different types of bar chart like this till now the the bars which i have shown you are in the form of the vertical format and next i'm going to show you that that will be in the form of the horizontal okay and then we're going to add some more features later on so for till now keep learning and keep exploring and keep visualizing hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have told you that how you can create the bar charts the very simple bar charts which by default their orientation is in the vertical direction here i'm going to change the orientation to the horizontal to create the horizontal bar charts and uh, so what's the difference between horizontal and the vertical bar chart is earlier in vertical chart 
we put the numerical values into y-axis this time when we're going to create the horizontal bar chart you need to put the numerical values in the x-axis and the category value into y-axis it will be like vice versa okay and uh, length of each bar will be like from left to right earlier in the vertical bar chart the length of bar chart was like from bottom to upward okay so this is the difference between vertical and horizontal bar chart here i'm going to just put this attribute orientation and put edge here which means the horizontal okay and it will turn your vertical graph into the horizontal one yes this type of chart occurred just because we didn't change the value like year should be there into our y-axis whereas the category value should be in our x-axis okay so no no and the category value will be into our y-axis okay so this is how our bar chart looks like okay and with the help of horizontal bar chart you can uh, add the full length labels easily because when you are having a lot of space like in, like y axis have a lot of space there you can put whatever you want to okay now i'm going to change the bar mode because the chart which i turn into is not looking too much attractive it's better to change the bar mode and let's check it out that how it will look like it depends that what kind of data sets you have accordingly put that kind of things and create them using plotly so here i have changed the bar mode to the stack and i think that stacked horizontal bar chart are looking better than the previous one isn't it so this is how you can easily create the horizontal bar chart and you can also change the bar mode as well and lots of other things which you can do with vertical bar chart all the things will be same but you need to change the x and y variables and the orientation as well okay and there's nothing to be changed so so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep data visualizing